Jenny, the headline was Congressional Report Says NFL Waged Improper Campaign to Influence Government Study. What would be your headline for what went on between the NFL and the NIH? Well, that's a good question. I I think it's such a complicated issue because the intersection of football and science is, is sort of a messy one, right? Because you have a football league that's, you know, invested in proving that it's committed to health and safety for its business concerns. So it wants to donate money to health and safety reasons so that it doesn't lose, you know, people who want to send their kids to play football. And then on the other side of it, you have scientists who uh, face similar pressures as any other people in in any other field, uh, and they want funding for their research. And so I think the result is is a little bit more complicated, perhaps, than, than it might seem. I mean, I do think the NFL messed up in a big way by calling their grant to the NIH unrestricted. When they gave $30 million in funds, they said it was unrestricted, but they obviously had a plan in mind for certain kinds of studies they wanted to fund with it. I think they would have been better served not calling it unrestricted, not sort of boxing themselves into that. And if, you know, whatever their motivations were for spreading the money around or doing certain kinds of studies, if they had not labeled it unrestricted, I don't think they would have been attacked so harshly in the congressional report. So, Jenny, explain to me and the listeners, why exactly were they trying to pull the money away from Robert Stern, who's at Boston University, part of the Concussion Legacy Institute, and really you know, really has been at the forefront of this whole thing. He seems like the guy you should be giving your money to. Right. And and I, I think that there's a lot of research in, in this field that deserves to be funded, right? So I think that that is where they look bad. The NIH peer review panel came up with Robert Stern as a study that they wanted to fund. The NFL had says they had a slightly different study in mind, a longitudinal study that instead of focusing on CTE and perhaps a way to diagnose CTE in the living, they wanted to do a longitudinal study that would also add value that would follow different groups of people of different ages who have played contact sports or not played contact sports to basically answer the question of if my eight-year-old son gets a concussion playing soccer, what are the possible long-term consequences? I think both research studies are valid, and this is where we get back to the debate of where the money goes. I think the back and forth we've been hearing the past few days is a couple different research groups who want to use the money to to advance their studies, and there isn't enough money going around, um, and I think that that's sort of the root of the controversy here. I guess what I don't understand, Jenny, is if you're the NFL and there's been the PBS report there's been the movie concussion, all these different things. I don't you don't you think before you actually make any moves in this regard? You know what I mean? Like, don't you think? Wait a minute, maybe that's what we want. But if this gets misconstrued the wrong way, we're going to take another massive PR hit here. Absolutely, because you know public trust is in the NFL is so thin right now when it comes to health and safety and more importantly, player trust. I mean, I think you saw a lot of players yesterday reacting to the report on Twitter and it just sort of underscores the feelings that the NFL has been trying to outrun. I mean, their past of, you know, inaction and, you know, kind of ignoring the head trauma issue. They've been trying to outrun that for so long, which is why this report was damning because it was saying the problems are not just in the past. They're also in the present. So I think the, the lack of uh, awareness there of how whatever their motivations were. I mean, I do think there are legitimate reasons why you wouldn't want one group to get 80% of their $30 million grant, not specifically because of that group itself, just it's in science, it's good to spread around money to different research groups. However, since that group is led by someone who has been critical of the league in the past, it's sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, they're, they're sort of blind. The NFL is being blind in this case, I think, and, and didn't show a lot of foresight and understanding, you know, if, if we push back against this, how it would look, especially when they had agreed on, on a similar study to the one that the BU group has proposed. Jenny, I, I saw the NFL just released a press release for instant replay changes. I think this literally happened since you've been on the phone with us. Uh, are you aware of this? Do you know what the changes are, or did this catch you? Did we catch you while you're on the phone while they just released it? 
you know, they they just uh, just brought it to my desk right before I jumped up to get on the phone. But I, I think it's um, just sort of, I don't think there's any huge changes. I think that it's just um, clarifying the process of, of what is reviewable and what is not. I think it's more specifically outlining it, if, if I understand it. Yeah, it looks to me like instead of telling you what will or won't be reviewable anymore, now they're just going to say, here's the only things that aren't reviewable. Appreciate the time, Jenny. Yeah, thanks for having me on. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.